Hello, welcome to another tutorial of Adobe Edge web animation software. Um, I found working with text directly in Adobe Edge quite simple, but to create original text in Adobe Edge, since you technically can clone copy and that type of thing, it becomes very cumbersome. So let me show you my techniques for creating text for your Adobe Edge files. So let's say you want to have animated text or animated banner. It's going to be much simpler to do that originally in Dreamweaver and manipulate the text in Adobe Edge. Let me show you how. I'm going to get started with a brand new HTML document. Of course, we're going to save the document. Let's just call this uh, text effects version 1. Now, just like all my other tutorials, I want to teach you proper technique and proper method. So we're going to name the file. Title the file, title that goes into your uh, Google web browser title for Google search engines. So we're going to title it my text effects, make a change, save a change. Now, a couple of things here. We want to set up basic CSS for this file here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the body tag and now this is not a typical way you'd set up a web page, but I'm just going to show you how to set up a page to work with the text inside of Adobe Edge the correct way. So I'm just going to quickly create a body tag rule for my body tag. And I'm just going to set up my body tag to be 44 pixels. And let's pick this typeface here. Now, this will make sense in a second when I create my content for Edge. So, I'm going to create a simple uh, a couple of pieces of text here. Think Adobe Edge. Okay, now I want to put this inside of a wrapper. So, I'm going to select the body tag, come up here to insert div tag, and simply call that. Okay, now let's take a wrapper tag and create a rule for the wrapper tag. Select the tag, make a rule. If you looked at my Dreamweaver videos, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, select the tag, make a rule. So we're going to make a rule for the wrapper tag. The wrapper tag is going to be, box is going to be 600 pixels wide. We're going to drop that down from the top about 18 pixels. We're going to put this in the center of our document, left and right and hit apply. Okay, now the other thing I would want to do too is I want to put this on a background. I want to make my type white so I can go right back to my wrapper tag. I just want to share with you that this stuff is inside the wrapper tag. So I'm going to double click the wrapper tag again, make the content text white, make the background color. Let's pick this blue color which I have to like a lot right there. Okay, make a change, save a change. Now this document is ready to work inside of Adobe Edge. The other thing I just want to change here is I just want to put some padding. So again, I can double click box and let's put it in 10 pixels of padding. Okay, now let's go to Adobe Edge. Okay, so now we're in Adobe Edge. Okay, if you look at my previous tutorials I post on Adobe Edge, you'll see some basic uh, understanding of how to work with the assets or the elements as Adobe Edge calls this. Now for text, again, text is very sophisticated in this program, but it's not such a great program for creating text from scratch other than creating the box. And it's much simpler to do your text inside of Dreamweaver style with CSS and make further changes inside of Edge. In the future, I'm sure they'll make this change, this correction, but for now, I think it's better to work to build your text originally inside of Dreamweaver or a text editor, save it as a HTML page and then bring it into the program. So we're going to file open, open file. And open up that file that I just created inside of Dreamweaver. Okay. Now, what I typically like to do here is notice that this page here is version 1. I want to keep the original Dreamweaver file intact. So I'm simply going to go to File, Save As. This way you have a starter page. In case you really mark this up, you have the original to go back to. So I'm going to call this version 1 Start. Okay. 
So I have the original Dreamweaver page I can always go back to in case I muck this up. Now, very important step here. Notice that my stopwatch is turned on, which means if I start manipulating this text, it's going to create keyframes for me. I don't want to create keyframes at this point because I want to organize my text to basically be positioned on the page differently. Now, let's turn this up. Let's hit Command Z and turn the stopwatch off. Okay, now I just want to share a very powerful technique with you. I'm going to turn the stopwatch off for a second. Now, notice that this text box container is very, very big, and so is this one, and so is this one. Now, we can still work with that, but I'm going to show you an alternative way to work with this file inside of Dreamweaver and bring it back into the program. Okay, so I have the file, original file, open back up inside of Dreamweaver, and I'm just going to make a simple change. I'm going to create a paragraph rule. I'm going to select the tag, select the tag at the bottom, and create a rule for my paragraph, paragraph rule. Just P for paragraph. And I'm simply going to create the box width. So the box width is something like 36 pixels. Okay, so the box width is now set to 36 pixels. If I save this change file, save, and round trip back to edge, it's going to say you've made changes to your file. Well, that's fine. So I'm simply going to say update the changes. Yes. Now, what that did for me is that just, just put this little container here, which I can work with a lot simpler visually to see on the page. I don't need to have this long-winded text box. Again, I just want to make sure that my keyframes are turned off. If the keyframes are turned on auto keyframe, then it's going to create all these keyframes when I start clipping my text. I don't want to do it at this point. So Command-Z, 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 Macintosh Command-Z, Windows Control-Z. Okay, so let's turn our auto keyframe off temporarily. Now I'm going to position my text for the start position of where I want this text to be. So I'm going to put this here. Unfortunately, this version, since it's the preview version, doesn't have rulers or a grid or guide, so it's kind of, you have to kind of eye it up here. And I'm going to just select all, command A, select all, and put this in the center of my page. Now, this blue box came in as a div tag. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to come up here to the right and lock that into place. So if I select all right now, I have to hold down the command key or control key, deselect the wrapper tag, and I can basically position this into place where I want it to be. So that's where I want my text to start. Make a change, save a change. Good to have to get into. A couple of shortcuts here. Command minus zooms out, command plus zooms in. Windows control minus, control plus. So let's get started by editing this text. So the first thing I want to do here is turn my auto keyframe back on. So I click here. Now, if you're familiar with After Effects or Flash, this timeline works a little different. They've added some really cool features, something called a marker, which means when I set my keyframe, this is what I want my animation, my text to be when I finish the animation. So as an example, I'm not going to drag my playhead out to a position. I'm going to drag the marker out to a position. So this timeline is done in seconds. The program thinks in milliseconds. So one second equals 1,000 milliseconds. Five seconds would equal 5,000 milliseconds. I want my animation to pop and happen very quickly. So I'm going to take this marker here from the bottom and drag it out to about three quarters of a second. Okay. So now if I take this text, move it to the right, holding down the shift key to constrain it, notice that it created animation. It created tweens in flesh. You notice tweens. Basically, it set two keyframes from point A to point B. Very cool. It did this for me. So if I scrub through here, you'll see that it takes the text and drags it out. Okay. Now I want my text to have a little movement to it. So I select the layer, and up here in the properties palette, I'm going to pick ease out bounce. So I can preview this by either scrubbing the playback head, hitting the space bar, and you'll see how that gets affected. So I could move my playback head back to the beginning. You can also use these tools here over here to the left. This goes to the end, this goes to the uh, end, this goes to the beginning of that particular animation for the whole entire layer project. So again, space bar. Now, if you want to see what it looks like on the web, command return, just like in Flash, command key return, places inside of the web.
Before we move forward, let's just repeat a few techniques here. Again, if you want to manipulate your text on the page to position it, make sure that your auto keyframe is not on. If it is what's going to happen here, is it's going to create keyframes for you and it's really going to muck you up. So I don't, if you're manipulating your text for position on the page to start, make sure auto keyframes is turned off. That's really going to save a lot of headaches. So I'm going to position this again, roughly right in the center here. Okay, make a change, save a change, good to have to get into. So again, let's just review a few steps here. Over here to the right, I have my elements. Now you can name your elements whatever you want. So if you want to call this one Think, and this one Adobe, and this one Edge, that's totally up to you. But since I just have a simple three pieces of text, it'll be very simple to keep track of. All right, so let's move this animation again across the page. We're going to do this by making sure our, our auto keyframe is on. Now, unlike Flash and unlike After Effects, we're not going to move the playback head. We're going to move the marker. So again, I want this to happen in three quarters of a second. So I'm going to put my marker here. Therefore, if I take this and drag it off the stage by holding down the Shift key, it's going to create keyframes for me. Okay, so there's my keyframe. And if I hit the space bar, that's what it's going to look like. Now, if you want that to happen quicker, which animations should really pop and zing, I'm going to do this two ways. I can select the asset, come up here to milliseconds, and do exactly half a second by typing in 500. That would be one technique. Or, of course, I could just drag and make it smaller. Okay, these little guys here goes to the beginning of the, of the animation and the end of the animation. Now here's a little technique here. Let's say that this guy, this marker is lost way down the timeline and you don't want to have to scrub to get it. You can hit Command K, Macintosh, Control K, Windows, and basically reset your marker. So if your marker is way down the timeline, I don't want to have to scroll down there to get it. Command K basically puts it right back into position. Control K, Windows. I can also Option minus, zoom out of my timeline. Option plus to zoom into my timeline. Of course, Windows Epi, Alt minus, Alt plus, Alt minus, Alt plus. Okay, so let's go back to normal. So you could also fit it inside the timeline by hitting Alt forward slash key. That's the one next, that's three over from the P key. Okay. So that just extends the timeline. So here I have milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you can take this and drag this down, but also drag it down here as well. Okay, so let's animate the rest of this text. I copy Command C, select the next piece of text, and paste. Notice my playback head is at the end. Wherever you put your playback head, that's where we're going to paste. So I want to take this and move this back. Again, if you hold the arrow key to the right and you're here for a couple hours, but if you hold down the shift key, then it'll just move a lot faster, except it's going to put it right in place. I'm going to select the word edge and paste. Again, shift key, move it to the right, and you're all good to go. Now, if you want to play this, just simply hit the space bar and it's going to show you what it looks like. And again, if you want to shorten this, you do it with milliseconds inside the properties palette or you can shorten it right here in the timeline. Now, what I want to have happen next here, I want this to have some kind of bounce to it. Right now, it doesn't have anything. Now, I should have set this up originally before I copied and pasted. That would have been a clever thing to do, but I just want to show you how I can make changes to an existing timeline. I hold down the shift key. And I want this to uh, bounce out, ease out, bounce. So that just puts some kind of movement to my text. Very simple technique. Now, what I want to have happen here, make a change, save a change. Select this last layer, which is the word edge. I'm going to move my playback head roughly to a half a second. And I'm going to paste, but I'm just not going to do a typical paste. I'm going to go to paste inverted. I want this to play backwards off the stage. It entered onto the stage. I want to go off the stage. Shortcut Command Shift V Macintosh Control Shift V Windows. So I can select the next layer and Command Shift V. Select the next layer and Command Shift V. So now it's going to leave the page after it enters the page. Now let's say I don't want to have that same type of 
easing. So I can come back into here and say, let's go ease, let's do elastic out. So I move my playback head to the beginning. I hit the space bar and there you go. Now let's say you want to shorten this distance here. If you want to shorten the distance by selecting these layers that are selected, then I can just come back up, back up here and let's shorten that to say 250 milliseconds, which is a quarter second. Now notice when I did that, I had these gaps between my playback. So a simple solution to this, okay, so a simple solution to this, and this is an old trick that works in a lot of different types of programs, but I'm going to have these selected. I deselect the first one and simply move it back. Deselect the second one by holding down the shift key, and move it back. So if you had a gazillion of these, you could do that same process. Select all that you want to affect, hold down the shift key. So now if you save that, hit the space bar, go back to the beginning here. So now it's going to flow out a lot faster. Okay, command return. Shows what it looks like on the internet, and there you go. Please subscribe, leave comments for me. That's how I know that you guys are watching. Whatever you're interested in, whatever you'd like to see, I can do. I've been doing this for 24 years. As far as Adobe software goes, I'm a total master at what I do. I share with you the same production techniques that I use to solve problems. Follow me on Twitter at ThinkAdobe at ThinkAdobe. Subscribe to my YouTube training videos. Have a good day. Talk to you soon.